The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. God's been, uh, gave me a download this week, and then I went to Sid Roth's uh, program with Glenda Jackson and others, um, George Carl and um, <clears throat> Keith Ellis's son, correct? And the three of them there were there and a minister, but prior to leaving, God spoke to me that he was coming to me as a king of glory, and I was going to open up the gates and let the king of glory come on in. He said, Can you, will you allow that? And, and I'm saying, yes, but I want confirmation. I said, normally my flesh is not that positive. That's usually a good sign that God's speaking to you <laughs> when he tells you something good. But he says, I'm going to come to you in a significant way, but the way I'm going to come to you in my glory is going to be corporate. And I'm going to come to you, and I'm going to show you what you can do. And, and, and all of a sudden, all the pieces started coming together, what God's been speaking for weeks. And it all came. And I said, but I want confirmation. Well, we went to Sid Ross taping. And sure enough, uh, here's the key that triggered. This is before she had a word for Jennifer and I. This was my confirmation from what God was speaking to me at home. She made a statement. Because I was saying, uh, God, I want confirmation. It was that simple of what you're saying. And uh, Glenda Jackson basically said, here's what uh, uh, I think Sid said, and when he comes, what's going to happen? What's, what's he going to do when he comes, this king of glory? All right? And she says, you remember uh, Bartimaeus cried out, Jesus, thou son of David. The application there was king. Thou son of David. He cried out because he knew and used that title because Jesus was king and a king will not refuse you when you request from the king. And God, that was my answer. That was my confirmation. God said, I'm going to send the king of glory, open up your gates. And, and uh, he gave a lot of really uh, things that I want to reveal in this church. And one of them that we've started, I'm kind of getting out, out I'm too excited right now. Uh, I'll try to relax. I'm like, oh. But in the midst of it, we've been starting to say our leaders, uh, with nine, nine pastors, and our leadership has been praying. Uh, we learned it in the Didache. They prayed three times a day, and that's not an unusual concept. People pray three times a day. Muslims pray three times a day. You know, uh, there's people that prayed three times a day all through history. But God was saying that, that what I'm trying to do corporately we started to say at 9 o'clock, at 1 o'clock, and at 5 o'clock every day, the leaders would know that we're praying for one another, and it would knit us together just to know that other people are praying. Not to make some kind of a legalistic law of 9, 1, and 5, but rather in your heart to know that others are praying. If one can chase 1,000, 2, 10,000, there's a synergy in it. And we started seeing breakthroughs. And Jason had a word about Nehemiah. When Nehemiah built, when the wall was complete, the enemy was frightened. And God said, you've built a wall. And you know, the only legitimate wall is Jesus. There's no legitimate walls in your life other than letting the peace of God guard your heart and your mind. Uh, uh, like the mountains surround Jerusalem, the Lord surrounds his people. The only legitimate wall for a believer is God himself. He shall guard our heart and our mind with his peace. He'll be a wall of fire around us. All right? Um, he can be a hedge of thorns. But God says, I'm going to bring a corporate glory. That this is going to require <clears throat> uh, uh, that when a king, how did she say? Because Jesus was a king and a king will not refuse you if you request from the king. And bam, I got it sitting in the audience. I got it. There was my confirmation. But little did I know we weren't done yet. Because she went on further to, uh, to basically speak to us. She said, brother and sister right there. Uh, and the, pointed to Jennifer and I. 
you've been asking God to do something special in the ministry. And the Lord said, I've heard your cry. Receive up and grab that mantle. It's coming on you greater than you've ever known, said the great I am. The king of glory is over you, and the king of glory is going to visit you, and the king of glory is going to take you to places you haven't seen, and the church is going to explode. I hope explode is in a nice way, okay? <laughs> that doesn't mean blow up, okay? But... I want you to explode with the glory of God, explode with Jesus' manifestation in your individual lives. And, uh, and later, uh, he, she basically uh, covered some things about uh, the angels of flames of fire. And at the end, she turned to us and says, and you two are going to be flames of fire, you two. That's what he promised. First, he said he was going to send his angels out, you know, to gather in the harvest, and then his preachers are going to be turned into flames of fire. It's happening today. And I'll tell you what, there's been, an, uh, there's been a surge of anointing ever since. And uh, uh, like I said, uh, it's the confirmation came prior to her singling it out, so I got multiple confirmation. So you better get ready, you better put your seatbelts on, because God's about to do a new thing. But here's, here, I want to give you the groundwork of the instructions he's given, because it, it's literally, it was a vast download of scriptures and concepts to decree and declare for this church. And, and one of the most important, significant things is, is that for the glory to be manifested through a corporate entity, it requires a one accord. You need to understand one accord. This is not just a scripture in Acts chapter 2 when they were all in one accord. It means that there's nothing between you and God. You know, when I was a baby Christian, the first time something rose up in me, I saw my foreman at work. And, it, and all of a sudden, I got this ugly feeling when I saw my foreman's face. And the Lord spoke, and I've never forgotten it. Most of our books have been birthed out of this concept. Dennis, don't let anything come between what you and I have together. And I saw that that ugly feeling is not tolerable. It wounds, it hurts, it grieves the spirit of the living God in you. There should be nothing. And I'll tell you what God's going to do. He's going to blow off the, the roof of your house. You don't need a roof. You know what a roof is? That's a ceiling and a limitation, right? You don't need walls because the only legitimate wall is the Lord. And the only legitimate foundation is Him. There's no other foundation, right? So basically, when you confess your faults one to another and you get your heart right, you blast it off the roof and you've increased the opportunity to increase from glory to glory. There's levels that are coming and God wants you to cooperate with these levels because He's going to bring you to them. To them and through them if you allow. When you pray, go into your room. It starts in the secret place. If you don't have a prayer life and you're in this church, you're hurting. You, you, matter of fact, you'll probably just leave because you'll either change or leave. But the secret place has to be a reality. It has to be you and Jesus. You need an experiential relationship, not dead religion. Religion won't last here. It won't, it won't, it won't, it won't survive. All right? And... 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, We all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into that same image from glory to glory. That means there's levels. All right? Just like Ezekiel's water, from the ankles to the knees to the waist, till you have to swim in it. Now, there is a hope of glory. And where is that? Messiah in you, the hope of glory. Where is that? In you. But Watchman Nee was my mentor when I was a baby Christian. And you know what he said? He said, there's multitudes, multitudes, multitudes that know how to get Jesus in. But once he's in, he lives a confined, restricted life because their flesh dominates and rules all of their life. They do it their way. And so what God was basically telling me was the intent of having him in was that living waters would flow out. A release of the Spirit takes takes what God would call a spiritual walk and a requirement. He's not interested in just getting Jesus in you. He's interested in getting Jesus out of you. <laughs> and so the glory is within, but the glory needs to be released. And that's when you start practicing the presence of God. You start carrying that atmosphere. Uh, it, was, uh, it was like Psalm 23, 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You've anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. It overflows. It was meant to overflow, not just be enough to get you saved. It was meant to overflow. You are to be an influence yes. in the earth. Now, he says, this 
personal atmosphere, this learning to release. You can be trained to learn more and more, to let, let the spirit have its way to flow out of you, to overflow. It's actually, for me, it was a revelation of El Shaddai, the God who was more than enough. See, so we're too, we're too prone to settle for whatever's enough. It, uh, never be satisfied. You should be a God-hungry individual that says, I want more. I want more and I'm not going to be satisfied. So overflow needs to become a revelation. You need to know that you're never going to run dry because th there's a fountain springing up that you'll never thirst again. And the more you give away, the more that it returns to you exceedingly abundantly above all that you would ever even ask or think. Okay, so now here's where the Lord starts speaking. Many years ago, this is a culmination. I'm talking a culmination of years of revelation is now, the time is now where it's going to happen. God, we started Kingdom Life Church and even Full Stature Ministries in the traveling days, but God was basically given Jennifer and I one scripture, Ephesians 2, 20. It says, having been built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, he himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in whom you are also being built together. It was always corporate, corporate, corporate. You want to see the power of God move? It needs to be a congregation. It needs to be a people who are not a people who have become a people. Identified by the Spirit of God, by being in the right place at the right time. And here's what I, we saw happen already. We started praying 9, 1, and 5. And here's a, a pattern that God uh, gave me for building and we did this when we were traveling. We taught this at the Brian Simmons Church. We taught it at every church we went to. Uh, you can memorize it, J-A-D-A. -A. Here's the way God's going to work. The J stands for your jurisdiction. Do you know where your jurisdiction is, your territory, your neck of the woods? Did you know I live in Bailiwick subdivision? Bailiwick means your neck of the woods, your jurisdiction. Your, that's where a bailiff was in charge of a bailiwick. All right? It's a place of authority. So J stands for jurisdiction. I want you to open up your hearts. Why? Because you're going to see breakthroughs in your life. You're going to see radical change in the days ahead. All right? The second part is adjudication. Adjudication is just a fancy word for rule. It's where you judge, where you can decree, make decrees and declarations. You adjudicate. You have a place of jurisdiction. That can be your job, your home, your business, as an employee, school, neighborhood, church. you got to know where you belong. And God has appointed the exact time and the exact place in which you should live. In the book of Acts it says that. All right? So he's appointed. You need to be in the right place at the right time. But in that jurisdiction, know your jurisdiction. Stay out of other people's jurisdiction. Know your jurisdiction. But in that jurisdiction, adjudicate, which means what? Rule. And how do you rule? Practically, let the peace of God rule. It has to be a Jesus rule, not you in your flesh taking authority. That has no power. As a matter of fact, that's just legalism. Legalism is trying, all right, rather than trusting and releasing the anointing of God. What's the third element? D, displacement. I love it. I love it. Displacement is true spiritual warfare. I've seen a lot of people yelling and screaming in spiritual warfare, but I'll tell you what, their character and their nature didn't have enough anointing on it to blow the fuzz off a peanut. Huh? <laughs> Displacement means that your presence, you're doing like presence evangelism. Your presence comes into an arena and peace rules. You are the prevailing, displacing the powers that be. I don't care if you're in a room full of uh, demonic people. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. When your peace is ruling, that is ruling the atmosphere. It's displacing the atmosphere that bees. Now, I'm saying all this can be done as an individual, but God's going to do it corporately. Amen. He's calling for a corporate glory that's going to be manifested in this place. And we're going to get to the requirements. So what is the other part of the procedure? J is jurisdiction. A, adjudication. D, what's going to happen? Spiritual warfare or displacement? God enters in. The last is advancement. I'm telling you, I know that I know that I know we're in a season of, of, of explosion and breakthrough and advancement, and that can take on all many different forms. Hopefully, I'd like you to grow, I'd like you to explode from the inside <laughs> more than seeing numbers. I want to see you increase and abound and overflow. 
in all real knowledge, abounding love, all right? Now, when Nehemiah, <clears throat> or um, 2 Chronicles 5, verses 11, and it came to pass when the priests came out of the most holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves, important point, without keeping to their divisions. And the Levites, were, uh, who were the singers, and with them a hundred and twenty priests. Interesting number, isn't it? This is Solomon's temple. A hundred and twenty priests sounding with trumpets. Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound, and praise the Lord that a cloud filled. The priests could not continue to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house. What happened in Acts chapter 2? On the day of Pentecost, when they were in one accord. All right? The message is easy so far. I'm laying the groundwork of the how-tos. But when you see the reality of what needs to transpire, this is the place that's going to separate, separate us out. You have to have a proper attitude toward the body. Isn't there many sick, die prematurely? Because of what? Failing to properly discern the body of Christ. If there's someone that you don't even like, you better, you better see the Jesus in them more than what you don't like. Because failing to discern the body of Christ, you're not going to enter into the kind of glory that God's got for your life. He's a holy God. So pastors, we've done this. We're doing it in unity. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. How do you keep the unity of the Spirit? The bond of peace. Well, what's peace? Peace is the only legitimate wall that you're allowed to have. Peace with one another, peace with God, pursue peace without which what? No one's going to see the Lord. So peace is the only legitimate thing to guard your heart and your mind. Not self-protection, not poor me. As a matter of fact, rejection should be so thoroughly purged from this congregation those that have been knit with us for years, I, I, I don't run into people that suffer from rejection. You know why? Because when you bless them that curse you and you pray, you begin to see that they're the victim. You're not busy, poor me. You're basically releasing, bless them that curse you, pray for them. Oh, my goodness, they need Jesus. Oh, it'll transform your heart on the inside to where you have a totally different perspective of life in the kingdom. And that's the rule of God. Now, Philippians 1, 27 in the uh, <clears throat> complete Jewish Bible says, Only conduct your lives in a way worthy of the good news of the Messiah so that you stand firm, united in spirit, fighting with one accord for the faith of the good news. Do you hear that one accord? How do you fight in one accord? If you're not, strife is the tool of the enemy. It's in his tool belt. Strife is unforgiveness being worked out in everyday life. That's all that is. Strife. God's basically saying, here, I'm going to tell you something. We're going to walk in the light as a congregation. And I want to give you some, some hard, cold facts on what it means to walk in the light. First of all, 1 John 1, 7 if we walk in the light as he in the light, we have fellowship with one another. So don't tell me you're walking in the light, but you don't like people. All right? That's the same as hating your brother. And you can't say you love God and hate your brother. All right? If you walk in the light as he is in the light, you have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from sin. One of the weakest links in the believer's witness is disunity. Jesus foresaw this when he made it one of the last two commands that we should love one another and when it was the chief petition of his last prayer. Hmm? You think that's a priority then with God? Walking in the light is a solution to this. 1 John 4.20, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? I can still remember Norman, Norman Grubb in Africa. There was somebody in the congregation he didn't like. And he just figured, well, I don't hate them. I just don't like them. 
until the Lord showed him how it was holding back what God wanted to do. You're not allowed to dislike that. Actually, that's pride that's standing in the way. Well, I only dislike them. Oh, really? You're supposed to see the Jesus in them, regardless of what else is there. You're supposed to see, get past the barbed wire and go for the gold and pull the gold out. Matter of fact, most of the transformed lives we've seen in this church, it was pulling the gold out, not, not maximizing the problem. And decreeing and declaring the problem. That's fault finding. That's not accomplishing anything. Uh, recently, there's an article in Psychology Today, by the way. Of course, Psychology Today, um, I think Jason posted it. It had a thing. Uh, he said, they discovered that if you had trauma, which, by the way, God is going to supernaturally heal some of you from trauma before you leave this building. If you've had trauma in your life, you're supposed to feel the emotion. That's not a solution. That's just psychology today saying, as opposed to what? Stuffing, suppressing it, and pretending like it's not there. And boy, believers are good at this. You know, that was one of the hardest things about discerning of spirits is I know when people are doing that and they'll convince me, I dealt with that. I dealt with that already. I dealt with that. And I'm going, I know you haven't, but that's between you and God, you know, because you know the source. You know what they usually mean when they say I've dealt with it? I've given a rational explanation for it. I know people that were bitter toward parents, and they'd say, well, you know, I was raised in poverty, but you know what? They did the best they could. You know what that is? That's an excuse. That's not releasing forgiveness to them. You just made an excuse for them to make yourself feel better. You're going to have a wall there that needs to come down. And today, God's blowing off roofs knocking down walls and getting you back to the only foundation that will cause you to stand. All right? Now, dislike, anger, fault-finding, criticism, that's really hatred. Let's go Bible. That's really hatred. Hatred is any attitude that is departed from perfect love. Whoa. Any attitude that is departed from perfect love. Redemption is the name of the game. If you're talking about somebody, you better be part of the solution and blessing them and looking for a redemptive solution or quit talking about them. It tells me you still got a wall. Hmm? You dislike them. They are not yours. They are God's servants, not yours. They belong to Him and not to you. God is able to tell them whether they're right, right or wrong. God is able to make them do as they should. That's Romans 14, 4, the living Bible. Interesting translation. They are God's servants, not yours. They belong to Him, and not to you. Is that, is that kind of calling forth a release? That's what it's calling. It's calling for that love to release them, bless them, that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Dislike, anger, fault finding, and criticism are really hatred. Hatred is any attitude that is departed from that perfect love. And uh, two scriptures that, that God had always reminded me of in learning how to allow Him to rule was Proverbs 16.32 <clears throat> and Proverbs 25.28. And they both kind of depict the same thing in a different way. It's basically Proverbs 16, He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. Now, we're not talking about selfish rule or soulish rule. We're talking about he who rules his spirit. The only way to rule his spirit is Jesus ruling and you surrendering to the peace of God that will rule. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. That's not a suggestion. That's the command coming from the king. Let the peace of God rule. If peace isn't ruling, something else is. A step out of peace is a step out of love. Love precedes peace. Peace precedes your perception. You have the heart of Jesus, you'll have the eyes of Jesus. But you don't see clearly if there's something in the eye. And then it's just fault finding, analysis, speculation, paranoia, hmm? suspicion. That's the counterfeit to real discernment, a spirit of suspicion. 
Are we getting clean? Is the glory going to come to us? Are, are you over there going, oh, Jesus, I forgive, I, I forgive Ralph, I forgive Aunt Eleanor. I forgive. Well, you better, all right? Because God's going to do a marvelous work in one accord. You know, even at the supper of the Lord, at the last supper, it was Judas betrayed him, even in that midst. And Jesus says, what you've decided to do, go do. Dip the bread of friendship and reached out to him. Judas went out. The scripture says Judas went out and it was dark. How's that for a prophetic insight? But where did the rest of the disciples go? They went to the Mount of Olives, the place of illumination, and were discipled and poured into and being discipled by Jesus himself. That's the choice we have. You can go in the path of light or you can go in the path of darkness. You can accept or you can reject. Basically says he who has, in Proverbs 25, 28, who has no rule over his spirit is like a city broken down without walls. What did we say about walls? He who has no rule over his spirit is like a city broken down, he has no walls. Well, you can do this when you see something, somebody you don't like. Oh, there, oh, there's Ralph. Oh. You know what that wall is? The enemy can go through that. That's his wall. That's a fear wall. That's a self-protection wall. The enemy has access. He's got the key. You didn't really stop anything when you do that. Huh? You're walking, in the, you're walking in the grocery store and you see the last person on the face of the earth that you want to see. And you go, oh, hi. That, that tightening up, that's a wall. That's sin. If that's the worst person you should be, God gave you a marvelous opportunity to bless them. That hey, He strategically ordered that person to walk down that aisle for you. you all temptations are tailor-made for you. You needed that. Amen. Did you ever think of that? So that you could respond and glorify your heavenly Father by going, Oh, Jesus, I bless them, bless them, bless them. I release a loving power of blessing to them. Huh? Oh, boy, you'd be f so free. Just remember, your temptations are tailor-made for you. So if you get, if, instead of complaining about the same old, same old, why don't you deal with the same old, same How many times do you want to go around that mountain? God will take you by the easiest way you're willing to go. Do you want to go the hard way or you want to go the easy way? Yikes. Come on. God's, God gave me a word, and he said there are going to be people in the congregation, let alone... YouTube, which is far more watching YouTube than there is in this room. But he said, there's people in this room that are going to have to resolve some things before they leave today. Because you, you've covered up the dislike. You've glossed over it, and it's still a wall. And God says, I'm going to put together a unity. And you know what's going to happen? Remember that J-A-D-A? -A? Huh? You come together. And matter of fact, I'm encouraging some of you to pray. Nine. And when I say pray, if you're driving the car, for heaven's sake, does it not mean pull off the side of the road, get down on your knees, and pray for half an hour? <laughs> I'm talking that if you're driving <coughs> and it's nine o'clock and you just go, my brothers and sisters are praying at this time. My leadership is praying at this time. And that might even be sufficient, you know? And I don't want you closing your eyes while you're driving either. Bad move. You're not that spiritual yet. <laughs> now, <clears throat> the key, even in the early church, in the teaching of the Didache, they enjoyed the fact that they might be in the middle of the hustle and bustle of work, school, concentration, and they knew at certain times their little group, their little house church was praying at that time. And it was kind of an inner assurance that I'm not in this alone. If one can chase a thousand, two, ten thousand, wouldn't you like to be part of that instead of being the lone ranger who thinks you got the handle on everything? I'd rather be part of something bigger than myself. I don't know about you. And God says, I'm going to bring the glory to your church, but this glory is going to be corporate. And it has its requirement. There is one requirement. You're going to have to walk in a forgiveness lifestyle to where there's no walls between you and anyone else. There's no likes and dislikes. There's only redemption. Now, God's basically saying, remember, <clears throat> whoever has no rule over his spirit is like a city broken down without walls. That does not mean you don't put up carnal walls. It just means you don't have any legitimate walls of God. 
You don't have the peace of God guarding your heart and your mind. You don't have the wall of fire around you. You don't have the hedge of thorns. You don't have the mountains that surround Jerusalem, the Lord surrounding his people. You don't have them surrounding you. You've got stuff. You've got man-made walls and divisions. And God's basically saying, when those walls come down, you enter into a one accord. Isn't it interesting that Solomon's temple, for the glory to come down corporately, they had to be in one accord? Yeah. On the, in the upper room, of course, it started with, let's, I think, 500, ended up with 120, which means what? Some people can't do one accord. And if they're drawn away, they'll be drawn away by their lusts. And when Jesus invited them to the feast, what were the three excuses? Do you remember? In general, relationship, business, mm, possessions. If you let those three things distract you from the fellowship of believers, is that if you don't gather with me, you scatter? Wow. Hmm. I think I'd rather find out what God's doing, become part of something bigger than me at some point. But here's what happens. Jurisdiction, adjudication, displacement. I'm promising you, here's the, one of the ways the glory is going to show up. It's not necessarily in a corporate meeting. It will. But in the, what is going to happen is in your jurisdiction, school, home, neighborhood, job, your jurisdiction, you're going to see the rule of God influence. You're going to see displacement. And things are going to be removed out of the way in families, in jobs, in situations. We've already seen, just our leaders have been doing this for some time, and we've already seen radical breakthrough. Because why? A three-fold cord is not easily broken. Two is better than one. Come on, this is just, I mean, even a little bit of common sense math will tell you that there's something about unity that not only pleases the heart of God, was not only the prayer request of God, one of his last hungering deserves, desires, but he was basically saying, I pray that you would be one. We think individualistically a little too often, but the, he who has no rule over spirits, like a city broken down without walls, meaning you've got all these carnal walls. What did Watchman Nee say? It was easy to get Jesus in the hope of glory into this temple and you are the temple of the Holy Spirit but God says I want out of the base of that temple to flow rivers of living water so that wherever that river flows out of you things grow, prosper, bear fruit. God confirmed this word when he was speaking this word to me. He gave me Psalm 92 and he showed me there's going to be a new spiritual authority that's going to be upon and it's going to be a fresh oil or a fresh anointing and that it's going to flourish. And lastly, even in old age, the flourishing is going to multiply. Hallelujah. Of course, people my age, they like that old age scripture, you know. <laughs> even in old age. All right. Psalm 92, I think that's verses 10 to 14. Look at it because you're going to see it happen within, your, within our midst. Now, it says in uh, Hebrews 4, the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, discern of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. <clears throat> if I see faults in my brother as something bigger than the fact of Jesus in him, I am sinning. Ouch. You're supposed to say ouch. Or you didn't get it. If I see the faults of my brother or sister bigger than the Jesus in them, I am sinning. Hmm. When my eye is single, it's full of light. I'll see the junk, but I'm going to see the gold. Hmm. The only solution to fellowship problems is to walk in the light and let Jesus rule our spirit. Uh, when I face up my hardness, anger, and criticism as sin, I'm humbled at the cross and I'm a candidate to be an instrument for one accord and for the blessings in my jurisdiction. Think about your jurisdictions, your job, school, home, neighborhood, family. Wouldn't you want an anointing in that jurisdiction? No sense standing there and doing nothing and being helpless, <laughs> right? If God placed you someplace, you should be a vic victor in that area, more than a conqueror. 
Your jurisdiction, you should be ruling. How do you rule? Peace has to rule and triumph over it. If you say, but you don't understand a lousy job I got. Well, then you be the best person you can be in that lousy job. Promotion doesn't come from the east or west. It's God that lifts up one and puts down another, won't he? He'll do it for you. He's looking at the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance. I've had people that were nice to the boss only in their presence. <laughs> All right. But you know what? You don't fool nobody because God sees that. God's about to expose. He's about to expose that kind of duplicity. God's going to reveal it, and he's going to reveal it with his glory. And I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to, I want to be on the side of the blessing. I don't want to be on the other side. Failing to properly discern the body of Christ. Now, he goes on to say... <clears throat> uh, My brother is the apple of Christ's eye, and we are guilty of the sin of the... you got to start put that word. Let's put that word back into our vocabulary. Dislike. Let's get rid of dislike. Let's call dislike what it is. There's still a wall or a barrier. You know, I don't have to like Brussels sprouts, although I do. I don't have to like Brussels sprouts, but I don't have to hate them. Right? In that sense... I am basically saying that there is no wall between me and them except choice. Kingdom choice. A rule. Probably not the best example. I like Brussels sprouts and it's confusing me now. <laughs> I just confused myself with my own illustration. All right. Uh, God's not the author of that confusion. All right. But I'm telling you, God's going to start seeing breakthrough. How many want to participate in this? Nine, one, and five, knowing that the rest of the church is praying. See a breakthrough on your job, in the school, in your home, in family, jurisdiction. You know where your jurisdiction is. It's where you live. It's where you do, all right? In that jurisdiction, we're going to believe right now that the glory of God is going to bring forth by your cooperation to rule in that area, how many are going to memorize this? J-A-D-A. Because you take it wherever you go. Jurisdiction, rule, or adjudication. And what's going to happen? <clears throat> I want to hear testimonies of displacement. I want to say, I want you to walk into the house and carry such an anointing that if your wife's upset with you, she goes, oh, he's home. <laughs> Would that be displacement? Would that be power of God? God could do that. Oh, he's home. Okay. Isn't that better than he's home? That has to be dealt with, right? Adjudication. Displacement. Greater is he that's in you. Testimonies. And what's the last one? Advancement. That means we're going from one level of glory to the next level. All right? Are you ready for that? So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I re Holy Spirit, flash before our minds anyone that I have a wall. I may have watered it down to a dislike, but if it's a wall, nonetheless, it's got to go. Any wall other than the peace of God. I'm releasing forgiveness to them. I'm blessing them that curse. And if you're flowing from your heart, from your spirit, you're going to recognize quite clearly that they are the victim. I receive forgiveness, God, if I've been seeing myself as the victim. I am a victor in Jesus. I am more of a conqueror than Jesus. I'm releasing, releasing. I release judgment against everyone who's spoken against us. I release judgment of everyone who's cursed. There's people probably, even, even in a group setting, coming against you. Could be family members, could be old friendships, it could be old bosses and employees, fellow employees. But in the name of Jesus, we release loving forgiveness to them and we bless them that curse us. We pray for them. Out of our belly flows rivers of living water. All right. Now I want to pray for the I want you to stand up if you've had something that you would consider a traumatic fear recently in your life. And if you're watching by you you stream YouTube, I want you to just receive it right now. 
Anybody that's gone through a trauma in the recent past, difficulties, walls with anybody, I want you to just stand up. Father, right now, I'm going to pray to break the power of the enemy right now. Matter of fact, why don't you come forward? I want to pray for you. I want to pray to break off that trauma. Come on. Come on. Terry, you come up here with me. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord gave me a word for you when, when Dan went through his situation. I felt a river of compassion flowing out for you. It was flowing like a river and it's still flowing, but now it only lacked opportunity and I can feel the presence of God right now on you. He's going to take away that trauma. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Dan died on the table and was resuscitated back to life. And Jesus, Dan, stand up. Well, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. But what the Lord spoke to me was, that's the resurrection power, but his wife here lived with the trauma of the event. Huh? That's the part people dismiss. But God laid it on my heart. So the Spirit of the Lord is coming upon you right now. And, and He says, I'm healing all trauma right now. All of that which has come, even that which has happened prior to this. I am bathing you into newness and I'm washing it away even this very moment. I, oh, there it goes. There it goes. You're yielding it. You're yielding. You're taking it in. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Next time you see someone in, under pressure, realize that the people associated with them are living under tremendous pressure. Sometimes we lose sight of that, but God really cleared it that you're going to be fine. Same here. In the name of Jesus. In the name, there you go. I release, I release the breaking off of traumas. All traumas are dissolving. Just like tumors dissolve, God is dissolving traumas. And he's taking that newness of your heart, and there's going to be a freedom and a deeper peace than you've ever known before. And Monica, it's the same way. In the name of the Lord, there's been these, there's some things that you've gone through, even within a matter of weeks, that God says, but you turned a corner now, and you're moving. There you go. You're free. Right there. Right there. Right there. Your spirit bear witness with that? There's a freedom there. There's a freedom you have. It. And Stephen, right now, in the name of Jesus. Oh, there you go. Beautiful. Yielded. You're drinking it in. Take all trauma, all fears, all apprehensions, all, oh, there's um, things that you call, <laughs> called protection. God says, that's fear, and it's going now. I'll protect you. I'll be a wall of fire around you. I'll be before you, behind you, beneath you, and above you, says the Lord. I'm going to cover you and canopy you, and you're going to walk in a mantle of my presence. In the days ahead, there's going to be a fresh anointing, just like Psalm 92, 10, 4, 10 to 14. God says, I'm causing that to, come to pass on you in Jesus' name. You're going to be an instrument in your household to bring the glory of God into that jurisdiction in Jesus' name. And Eunice, uh, you just keep walking in the way that you're walking and yield. You know how to yield way down low in your, in your gut? Just yield. There you go, right. A little more. Relax. There, that, that, that. That's the yielding of the will to the Messiah in you. The hope of glory. <laughs> She's a little wobbly. Stay with her, okay? Just stay there and soak in. Don't quit just because I'm walking away. Thank you, Lord. He who began a good work, he's going to continue it. And God's saying it's going to, these two here, right here that I got my hands on, both of you, it's going to increase as you leave. You're going to, you're going to sense a peace and you're going, oh, it's still there. It's going to increase and abound. And as you draw closer to the Lord, he's going to cause it to increase more and more and more. Oh, the trauma of that, that last surgery that I know about, I know about the surgery and that, that trauma that went with it, we're washing it away right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> and we're praying for a quick recovery. That little joy bubble you feel down in there, that's the joy of the Lord. And that's His strength. So His strength is coming to remove, remove the barriers in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Any hurts and hurts and wounds and traumatic experiences, we're asking God to wash it away right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yield to the water. There you go. That's yielding. That's yielding. I'm yielding to the washing of the water of the Word. He's washing it away, taking away all trauma. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You yielded real good. You yielded real good. Oh, you're doing, you're doing it even better now that I said that. You're yielding even more. That's good. That's giving him space. Thank you. 
Same thing right here, yield. I want you to put your hand right here, and I want you to yield. I want you to fall back into my hand a little bit. I want you to feel how that feels. Yeah. Do you see, feel the change there? Okay, you don't have to fall. But that change, that's yielding. I want you to yield, and we're going to break the trauma off you right now in Jesus' name. You're receiving. All we have to do is teach people to receive from their spirit, and you're, gonna, you're, you're not going to go away empty. Yield, yield. Both of you are doing it real well. Yield. We break trauma off, but we're also releasing out of our belly. We're releasing, we're releasing that anointing that's going to displace the enemy in various jurisdictions. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. All hurts and pain. There's, uh, there's deliverance here from trauma. You know, I'm seeing, I'm seeing an accident. And uh, I don't know when it happened, but we're going to break that first and foremost in Jesus' name. We'll just take that trauma of that accident and break it off in Jesus' name. Yield. Yield. <laughs> and here's something I want everybody that's up here in this line. I want you to say this. I want you to offer your emotions back to God. My emo I was bought with a price. I'm not my own, and my emotions belong to God. I'm not allowed to suppress them, stuff them, because the enemy will take advantage of that, and he'll beat you with them. He'll, take, he'll, he'll torment, but he can't torment someone who stays in peace. So, Father, we just thank you, and I receive forgiveness for stuffing any emotion, any traumatic event. I'm allowing Jesus and Jesus alone to take it. Amen. 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 Increase. Increase, Holy Spirit. Now let's pray for everybody sitting. I want you to be a candidate to release the anointing that I'm in one accord. And at nine and one and five, I'm going to remember that even if I forget sometimes, I'm going to say, bless them. These people are praying for me in my jurisdiction. Isn't that nice to know that you could be at work and somebody in a group is praying for you in that area, to know that I wanted that my whole life, to know that some, you know, most of the time people don't pray for the preacher. <laughs> they want the preacher to pray for them. But to know that my congregation is praying, uh, even if it's just a whoosh, da, 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 ba, kuta, and I got to drive the car and I got to make a, I don't want to get lost here while I'm on the road. That's sufficient. You're honoring God and you're honoring that you're part of something bigger than yourself. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Right there, there's some joy coming. For all these people that are up here, what's the opposite of fear and trauma? Huh? The joy of the Lord. That's your strength. Thank you, Lord. Increase, increase, increase. Yield. Seal this work by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I think we're only at the ankles, but it's going to get deeper, right? You start practicing praying, and we're going to see breakthroughs in your jurisdiction. You're going to start ruling. You're not a victim. You're going to see displacement. And in many cases, promotion or advancement one way or another. Amen? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit forgive123.com.